the World Wide Web I found this circuit <coughs> and it was originally not a LED flasher but a Morse code oscillator and uh, I've tested it spent say one evening to do these tests and convert that Morse code oscillator into this LED flasher. Of course uh, such a very simple uh, two transistor oscillator is more or less common. You can find uh, this circuit and also many other circuits that are made in this way on the World Wide Web and on my YouTube channel. I surely have also um, somewhere in the approximately 1200 videos on my YouTube channel this kind of circuit. In general it's made with a uh, NPN transistor here and a PMP transistor and also in say books of the 1970s you can find in 1980s you can find this type of oscillator. And in the original schematic this was not an electrolytic <coughs> but say a bipolar capacitor of approximately I think 100 nanofarad, so 0.1 microfarad. Anyway, um, I tested it, uh, could take many say strange conclusions when testing it. For instance that when I wanted to lift the voltage up to 6 volt or 12 volt, the circuit didn't work properly. That has of course everything to do with the simplicity of the circuit. It's in fact too simple and on higher voltages uh, the, the, time, the time is set by the value of this capacitor, of course also here by the internal resistances of the transistors. But Anyway, this is a time dependent element and the capacitor is also the time dependent element. And that means uh, that uh, that means that because there are so uh, not so many components, everything in such a circuit is critical. Anyway, no problem with that. It's a good circuit and it, it, you can surely use it. It works now as a LED flasher. And you see how it flashes in a more or less quick rate. And there is another uh, small, uh, another ratio where the LED flashes. That has everything to do with the value of this capacitor. That's 10 microfarad or 1 microfarad. And now it is uh, 1 microfarad. But of course when we give that uh, capacitor another value by using this crocodile clip to uh, switch in another a higher value capacitor, that means that the flash ratio goes down. Completely logical when we look at the radio theory, etc., etc., electronics theory, etc. So, in fact, a useful circuit, minimum components, no problems with that. And now it works on uh, two uh, carbon zinc batteries, each 1.5 volts in series. So, the the voltage. Uh, where this with which this circuit is supplied is 3 volts nominal <laughs> and when the voltage drops down to a certain level uh, the level uh, where these two batteries are depleted the oscillation stops that means that there is a constant current flowing the LED lights up constantly and it will deplete the battery within say approximately quarter of an hour, one hour, I don't know that exactly of course, 
because there is no oscillation. Uh, there's no longer a, a, a current pulsed through that LED and that means that the battery uh, will give out a constant current and will be depleted very very quickly. So here the flash you can here see the current that it takes now. And this is on the 50 microampere scale. So when with every flash you can see that the current goes up to approximately 25 microampere. That's not much. And that means that such a, a 3 volt battery combination can work for a very long time. I don't know how long for, for uh, anyway I'm going to test it uh, during the night and the, the coming day etc etc. Anyway, uh, well that was more or less all to tell. Uh, perhaps interesting to show when I use the, the lowest value capacitor here, the flash rate goes up and the real flash rate is uh, much higher than you see now because it has everything to do with my camera. The digital camera cannot record in a proper way this uh, exact flash rate. But my oscilloscope can. I will now connect my scope to the circuit and on the oscilloscope we can see the pulses that are given out of this oscillator. So here you see the pulses. By the way kind of say a needle pulses. There's a quite a long time in between in this case by the way on that high flash rate and let's see what the oscilloscope will show us when we go to the lower flash rate that's here you see see how the circuit works on that lower flash rate Also, a very short time here, anyway. And also a kind of, say, oscillation here. That's very interesting to see. I had not expected that. But of course we use here uh, two transistors with a high amplification. And when uh, these transistors are driven, could be that there is a kind of strange first oscillation. Very interesting. Anyway, uh, the circuit again and interesting to show perhaps when I'm lucky uh, I can show what happens when the voltage of the battery drops down to the more or less critical voltage where the battery is no longer able to make the circuit oscillate. That means that a constant current starts to flow. So between this point here, the positive and the negative, when the circuit does not oscillate, a current starts to flow and that will be that will deplete the battery completely exhaust the battery to say the absolute minimum level. Could be zero volt, could be one volt anyway. Has to do of course say with the kind of rest resistance in such a circuit when it doesn't work. So that's what I wanted to show. Now it's three volt say this, this power supply mimics the battery. And let's see what happens when we uh, drop, <coughs> sorry, drop down the voltage. 3.1 volt now. Well, 1.9 volt, 2, 2 volts. That's important. Here you can see that on 2 volts, for instance, the current the whole circuit starts to take a lot of current 
uh, because uh, <coughs> the battery is healthy now and the circuit doesn't oscillate. It starts to take a current in the order of 10 milliampere. Well, in such a case, uh, a battery will be depleted very, very quickly. And this is one on 1.9 volt. But anyway, let's go higher to the voltage that a healthy battery can give. And now it starts to oscillate again. And here you can see, by the way, on the 25 volt scale, it's approximately 10 milliampere. Well, it's quite high. It has, of course, to do with the higher um, capacitor value here. So, when you take a higher capacitor value here, the time during which the uh, transistor conducts current is longer and that will make uh, that the battery will be depleted earlier. So go back to the maximum flash rate, high flash rate. And to the say low current. Uh, Twenty-five milliampere, ten milliampere, five milliampere, so around two point five milliampere. That's quite high, by the way. But of course it has everything to do with the fact that I supply now the circuit out of my 230 volt power supply. So let's go back again to the battery. The battery is here. It also flashes. Yes, it also flashes. And the voltage of is much, much lower. So this is a good circuit to be used with in combination with, a, with two uh, carbon zinc batteries or two alkaline batteries. And when you want to use it in another other application, you need, for instance, here a series resistor of 1K. When you want to supply it and uh, make it in such a way that it takes out the minimum current, the lowest current as possible. Thanks for watching.